What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Couple Things. With Sean and Andrew. A podcast all about couples. And the things they go through. Today is a fun conversation. We made friends with Danae during the Celebrity Softball Tournament here in Nashville. And so we were delighted when her and her wife came to join us for a conversation. That's right. We sit down with Danae Hayes and Mandy Kai. And this one was, this was a unique conversation because we hit some deep topics. Yes. But we were also almost laughing to the point of crying yes. with them. Yes. And uh, their story is really interesting. Danae talks about her experience of telling her mom that she uh, has a girlfriend and what that journey was like, uh, all the complexities with that. They tell their engagement story. They tell uh, about religious trauma and so many other things that I learned a lot through. One of my favorite takeaways from this was actually how they navigated trauma within their relationship, which I think was really fascinating. And Mandy has some wild, amazing wisdom. Yeah. Some of the greatest advice I feel like I've I've gotten on this show yet. This was fun. Also, Danae is a national champion softball player. Yes. She was MVP when we played softball at this charity event. And we had a blast, like laughed the whole night. We were like, let's have you on the show. So we hope you enjoy this one. They're, they have a lot of progress going on. We'll link some information about their podcast, yes. their social handles. Uh, Danae's a comedian. And so you'll get some laughs out of that. But we'll include that in the description down below. Without further ado, we bring you Danae Hayes and Mandy Kai. I just, Mandy and I both grew up playing competitive softball and like in front of the biggest stages, you know, but I don't know if I could have done That was different. I was 21 then when we went – or. Like 19 when we won the national championship. Maddie Chan, let's go! Yeah! Oh, yeah! <laughs> It's like 80 times. Andrew is full hype mode. Oh, Dude, I love it. When him. Danae and I first met, I was like, oh, yeah, I think we had some chest bumps. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got home and I was like, Mandy, I really hope Andrew doesn't think I'm a complete idiot. Because oh, total wavelength. Oh. Same wavelength. Yeah. Do you remember the comment I made? Whenever I told Ernest, goes, Dude, what happened to Andrew out there? And I was like, Dude, I think he got caught addressed in his crotch. <laughs> yeah. like, and, then, and then Sean was like, you told him that? And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then Ernest looked at me and he goes, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of weird that like uh, you knew he was doing that. Yeah. I was like, dude, I was uh, just yeah. playing. It oh, did, though. It's a nervous tick I have, to be honest with you. Just you go for the crotch. Yeah, 100%. It's like, oh, no, dude, I made that completely up. I didn't, like, <laughs> I didn't see you out there. I, like, oh, just completely. That's why I thought it was so funny that you, like, told Ernest, because I was like, he for sure was. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, you caught that. I was like, of course. Uh, no, I just completely made that up, that just to so get funny. Ernest's reaction. So you were 19 when you won the national championship. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, back. Oh, let's go back to that. Yeah. yeah. 19 uh <laughs> a complete and utter mess of a human being at 19 so that's why when we were watching your stuff last night i was just like wow did you play softball in college i did where yeah at seattle university oh no nice. she was a pitcher yeah. aka always, princess always. Wow. how'd you meet instagram believe yeah. it or not yeah slid into her dms well <laughs> I, I was still very much in the closet, guys. I was in Alabama, still living in my hometown. So I was too scared, even in the private DMs, to be like, hey, you're cute. So well, I, we both played softball, so it's like an 80% chance. <laughs> <laughs> Especially college, yeah. yeah. I was like, well, there is a chance. We play <laughs> softball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but no, I saw her, and I thought she was so pretty, and I followed her. And then I did the whole unfollow because she didn't follow me back. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. And then finally, like what, um, maybe a month later, yeah. I saw her profile again. It just popped up on my Explore page and I followed her. And then um, she finally followed me back. And it was yeah. just my utter charm. No, Charisma. it was my no, 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 <laughs> <good> <laughs> no, no. Well, it's so ironic about our life now. It's right when Instagram Live like popped off. Okay. Like I think it just became a thing actually. And Danae hopped on, and I was like, "Oh, what's this chick doing on Instagram Live? Nobody's doing that at the time." And she actually was like in the gym working out, and she started being really funny. And so I was like laughing at her video, and I'm like, "How is that such a full circle thing of like?" Me actually trusting that she was a real person was because of Instagram Live. And then Hi. we started talking from then. Yeah, I cracked some joke. I feel really bad. Shout out to the guy that I kind of like <laughs> made the joke at his expense. Yeah. But we were at the gym. It was just me and this guy. And he was probably like 16. 
It was like <laughs> one o'clock in the morning. And I went live on Instagram for no reason. I have no idea. Just like the feature just happened like that yeah. week. So I was at the gym and this dude looked just like Justin Bieber with his haircut. And so like I have my phone up and I'm like, what's up, y'all? Happy Instagram live. And I was like, I'm just working out with Justin Bieber. <laughs> and I hand to the guy and the guy goes... <laughs> like, why'd you throw me under the bus? Yeah. And uh, that one joke, Mandy thought she thought. I just thought it was so funny. I was like, I don't know why. Yeah. I don't. I, I, I think it was now. The, I'm like, it was the awkward awkwardness. Yeah, I think that. it was like his reaction, the fact that she like was being funny on video. Because like back then, like what eight years ago, people just weren't as candid on yeah. social media. So it was really refreshing, to be honest. And I was like, oh, I guess we'll talk. And she's like, no, want a date? I'm like. <laughs> Okay, I wasn't that forward. Yeah, wow. But I like, like to think I she wasn't. She wasn't that forward, but with her words, she definitely was. I was like, okay, yeah. I guess we're dating now. Yeah. Um, but she it was, was crazy because she was living in Alabama, Alabama, and I was living in California. So I was just like, hey, we're gonna talk. Like, let's just meet in person, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I flew to Alabama, and that's where we met for the first time. Wow. Yep. Yeah. That was uh, in twenty, like February of twenty seventeen. It was a while ago. Mm-hmm. What was the first date? Well, we went and stayed at an Airbnb on the lake that I grew up on. Straight um, first day. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no first well, day. in yeah. Alabama, I mean, like, it's not like I could, I, she couldn't have stayed at my house because my parents didn't know that I was out. <laughs> so I was like, what are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to the lake. Yeah. Who are you going with? A friend, you know? Um, but no, at that time, Mandy and I had a conversation before she flew in and she was like, I think out of respect, to yourself and to your parents, you should probably tell them you're hanging out with a girlfriend. And so I remember um, I was cooking eggs in my kitchen and my mom was sitting at the bar and she was like, so what are you doing this weekend? And I was like, it's now or never. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just watched this video on YouTube where if you count to five and then do what you're supposed to do, it makes Mel it Robbins. easier. <laughs> yeah, Mel Robbins, the five second rule. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> I was like, oh, well, I just watched that video. I'm going to apply that. So I was like, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to the lake with my girlfriend. And she was like, oh, you have a girlfriend. Like, what's your girlfriend's name? Like, girlfriend isn't best friend. Yeah. And I was like, she drives a BMW. That's the, all I could come, come <laughs> up with. I was like, she drives a BMW. And she was like, oh, well, what does she do for a living? And I was like, no, mom, like, she's my girlfriend. And my mom was just like, just kind of like looked at me and asked a couple like inquisitive questions about it didn't really say much about it and then I left for the lake the next day and we spent two days at the lake and it was awesome because my mom kind of like let me be like who I wanted to be for the first two days and then obviously the questions came after once yeah. we got home um but I knew it was really wild because I'll never forget this the first day we woke up at the lake, Mandy was already sitting on the balcony and it was a sun Sunday, maybe, right? It was a second day, yeah. Yeah. Day. Um, and Mandy was watching a church service and I had so much religious trauma because of my sexuality and religion around it. Um, and so Mandy's watching a church service and I walk out and I probably watched 10 minutes of it with her. And out of nowhere, I just start breaking down crying like and I, weeping and I was like did I just like <laughs> what did like I didn't know how to react because I've never met anybody with religious trauma prior to that yeah. so I didn't I wasn't exposed to it yeah but I just started like yeah weeping yeah and uh it was this very like euphoric feeling of like for the first time after so much hurt and suffering of God giving me just like a sense of peace and so in that moment I was just like this is who this is who I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. You don't just meet this stranger off of Instagram and she flies from California to Alabama. And then you have this moment of connection over a healing religious moment. And I was like, this is it. Wow. So ever since then, I, I've just been like, th this is my soulmate. Like I never believed in soulmates before that, but I met Mandy for 48 hours and I was like, she was made for me. I was made <laughs> for her. And uh, seven years later, it, wow. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a similar story, Mandy? Or? I mean, yeah. It It's crazy because at the time I had just got out of like a really awful relationship. And when Danae and I first heard talking, I was like, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I'm not interested. I'm definitely not interested in somebody that's in the closet because I w- I've been out and like proud of who I am since I was like 17, 18. And so how was that for you? You know, I had more internalized homophobia than experiences outside. Like my mom was really mad at me for lying to her than she was for me having a girlfriend. And so it was really interesting that I was like more ashamed of myself versus like the people outside having opinions about it. Mm -hmm. And then once I like kind of got over the idea that my mom was okay, then I just I never came out. I just (laughs) shared an Instagram photo of my girlfriend and I just went full send. I was like, you know what, if my friends are going to have any difference of opinion in me, then this Instagram photo is going to be the thing that we're going to stop talking and that's fine with me, you know, and I went to college and I kind of just fell into my identity and then never looked back. And so when I met Danae, that was 2017. I'd already been out for a good handful of years and very comfortable with my sexuality. And it was the last thing I expected to fall in love with somebody that was in the closet where I'd never had to be, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it was an entire different experience and like the amount of trauma that I learned about and the amount of empathy I had, like, it was just wild. And the, the moment that Danae was talking about, it was like a moment of healing for me, too, because even though I didn't personally experience that from people, I, you know, I, I exposed myself to it in my own, like, thoughts and emotions. And growing up the, at the time that we did, you didn't see it as much, mm-hmm. you know. And so and especially growing up in the sophomore world, you, like, heard a lot of talk about being a lesbian and, mm-hmm. like, people would make fun of you for being a lesbian. And it's just... The it's always funny because it was like, do you wear a bow or do you not wear a bow? I wore a darn bow. I wore a bow time. too. I was like, I was bowed up. Apparently, if you wore a bow, you weren't gay. Called no bow lesbo. Yeah. So I was like, ooh, I'm not gonna start that rumor about myself. Put two bows in my ponytail. <laughs> Maybe it was yeah. my mom put the ponies or the bows in yeah. my ponytail. Yeah, but but it really is wild though. Like her growing up in Southern California and me growing up in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. Like how different our. Uh, childhoods mm-hmm, could be yeah. um but He's, that's the beauty about us being together do you still have religious trauma i think that it's gonna always be something i have to to work through but i no longer have that shame of like i can't have a relationship with god because i'm ashamed of of who i am um i've had people ask me well now that you've come out, like, do you feel like you're, you no longer have a relationship with God as if like you can't have both. Mm-hmm. Um, and the craziest thing is my relationship with God has just expanded and become so colorful now versus before it was so black and white. I told Mandy and I said we weren't going to get into this on the podcast, but I was Sorry. also <laughs> taken to conversion <laughs> therapy as a kid, which is a form of therapy mm-hmm. to help you get rid of homosexuality so this was after you told your parents no this was when i was 11 so as a kid i had told my parents that i like girls and i was taken to see this psychiatrist that specializes in children who have told their parents that they have feelings for the same sex and then that psychiatrist helps Mm -hmm. the parents and the kids guide themselves away from that quote-unquote lifestyle Mm -hmm. Um, and then we never talked about it again after I went through therapy and all of that. So that's why I think it was less of a shock when I told my mom that I had a girlfriend coming into town. It was kind of mm-hmm. like, oh, those feelings that were here a decade ago are still here, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, so the religious trauma started as a, at a very, very, very young age, uh, 10, um, because the conversion therapy and the psychiatrist, it was all wrapped around mm-hmm. religion as to why you can't live this lifestyle as to why you don't need to act on this lifestyle. So it was, I would say I, I have lived at this point with religious trauma more than I've lived without it. So I'm still navigating that world, but, um, I just, I just feel so closer to God now and better understood and more open to go to him than before, because before I felt like I was unwelcomed and ashamed of who I was. So it's still a journey I'm navigating, but it's uh, it's a much more colorful and inviting journey, if that makes sense. You said you weren't going to get into it. But I know. Yeah. We can get, I mean, at this point, uh, <laughs> at this point, we just like opened it up. I think you so. open the door. Okay. I mean, you can't really explain our story. Yeah. Yeah. It's tough. You can't really. It's, ex- it's the reason we said we said that we didn't want to get into it because it 
there's a big part of the story that started us that we don't want to have our identity for the rest of our life. Right? Yeah. And so like, but it is a part of our story. It you know? is. And so it's, it's, it's hard to navigate not always talking about versus like living in the present, mm -hmm. you know? And so that was our conversation, but yeah. no, we are an open book about yeah. it. Okay. So. so I have one more question then. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm curious because you said at 11, you already had these feelings. You voiced them to your parents. They put you through conversion therapy. You ran away from the church because of the association with religion. So you basically went into hiding for how many years? And then when you came mm. back and you told your mom, were you just okay with the response that you're going to get, no matter what? And you said she kind of let you live your life for two days, and then the questions proceeded. Mm -hmm. Was it a was it eleven year old you all over again, or was oh, she yeah. more open? It was. Uh, I think it first started as Danae. This is not the life I want for you. This is not the life I imagined for you. And I think it was a. Uh, she tried to shut me down really fast when she saw how persistent I was to be in a relationship with Mandy. Cause I would fly out to California like twice a month mm -hmm. and I was living with my mother at the time. My parents are since divorced. Um, as of when I was 18, people always ask that. I think the story makes more sense when you realize that my parents who are polar opposites from each other and how they, um, treat me, you, it makes mm -hmm. sense that they're not in a, in a union because mm -hmm. that would be very polarizing. Um, but no, I think she 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 definitely turned her nose up at it once she saw how uh, I was just adamant. I was Mandy. Mandy was it. Um, then it started to become more of a, okay, well, let's keep y'all's relationship a secret. But mm -hmm. as a family, we'll understand the dynamic of the relationship. And Mandy's more than welcome to go out to dinner with us. Mandy's welcome to come over for, for family <laughs> night and dinners and all of that. It was more like a it's being tolerated for the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, which, like, there's so many. There's, like, a handful of photos out there of that short stint of when Mandy was. Then Mandy moved to Alabama. Mm -hmm. We got our own apartment. And there's a there's a handful of photos out there of where Mandy and I are like at Top Golf with my family or we're out to dinner with my family and it looks normal but you would just think Mandy and I were friends. Mm -hmm. It's not like Mandy and I were, you know, openly having PDA in front of our family or like holding mm -hmm. hands in front of our family. It was just like, don't ask, don't tell. This is unspoken. We understand that y'all have a one bedroom apartment, but the rest of the world doesn't need to know that. Mm -hmm. Um. And this and was the feelings between your mother and your father? Just my mother. Okay. Um, my dad, my dad, I don't know how else to explain it other than my dad is just he's like. He's just your biggest cheerleader. He's just um, in anything. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, okay. I always say that when God made my parents, he was like, I know you're going to have to be put through hell on one side of your family, so I'm going to make sure that the other side of your family is amazing. I just, I don't know how else to explain it. My dad is just my biggest cheerleader. Um, I just love him. Like, I just, there's not a single thing that I've ever done where my dad is just like, that's not good enough. <clears throat> and we've had conversations as an adult about how he allowed me to go to that conversion therapist when I was 11. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you ask him now, that's his biggest regret. But I've asked, I asked him, like, why would you, why did you put so much stock into, into my sexuality as a kid? And he said, I was just so afraid of you growing up out in the middle of nowhere, Alabama, where if you were to have gone to high school or middle school and told one of your classmates that you were attracted to girls, that would have, they would have ostracized you and bullied you for the rest of your mm -hmm. Tenure there, and he was like, "I was just trying to protect you, and I knew that once you got off to college, you were going to find yourself. But I was just doing my best to keep you in this small box for as long as possible to just protect you." He's like, "I went about it the wrong way, but that was my intention was protection." So, you know, I we've talked about it, Mandy and I, and uh, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what I would have done in that situation if I was him mm -hmm. back in the early two thousands yeah. in, in the middle of nowhere, Alabama. So I, I hate to fault him for that, but he was doing what he thought was best. So closing question on this topic. Okay. Um, fast forward, you guys have been married now for yeah. 
seven years? Well, we've been Almost. together for seven. Yeah, together for seven. But married for two. Oh, amazing. Mm-hmm. No. Um, has it come full circle with families? Our families... <laughs> Our families like a part of the picture have we kind of walked away from family great question mm-hmm. um is well, it an ongoing process close as ever with my dad and my stepmom okay it's so funny because they don't shy away from like even if they're at a grocery store and the the cashier is like what are you doing this weekend? My stepmom is like, well, she's so Southern. She's like, well, we're going to go and we're going to hang out with my daughter and her wife. You know, and the cashier is like, (laughs) you know, but, but my stepmom just doesn't shy away from it. My dad is like, uh, he just thinks my biggest cheerleader. Yeah. He Uh, he thinks Mandy's the bee's knees. He's like, I don't know how you got such a hot looking wife tonight, but by God, <laughs> the, hey, the pickings are slim when you're gay. He was like, and somehow you managed to get a good looking one. So kudos to you. But uh, he just, I think he was, I think he was like deathly afraid that I was going to marry, like, uh, I don't know, some like rough and tough like woman. But, but no, we, we have not spoken to my mom going on mm. over five years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's um it's one of those things where we always say you can't love somebody hard enough to make them love you back. Mm-hmm. I tried that for years. I thought, well, I'll just put myself in the box she wants me to put myself in and uh what that ends up doing is it just lowers your self-worth immensely to where you end up cutting your own legs off to help somebody else and um I just got tired of doing that. And honestly, I was, I wasn't vibrant and I, I wasn't living a life I was proud of and my career wasn't growing because I had no self-worth. So yeah, it's always an ongoing conversation though. Like it's never, I mean, like, I don't think you, you can take trauma, go to therapy for a year and then it's just gone. So we always have open conversations about like how she's feeling or if something's triggered or, you know, and it's not something that's overtaking our life at all Mm -hmm. you know but and it but it is something that like we always pulse check yeah you know and i mean mean, like even if danae's in alabama i'm like how you feeling (laughs) you know like are you good are you you good um but it was like that was excuse me what first two years of our relationship that was just some of the hardest times in my life in terms of just accepting us working through i mean when you're dealing with somebody else's battles and also trying to build a relationship Mm -hmm. at the same time it's just like that navigation process was one of the hardest things I think we've ever gone through and that's why we always say if we can get through the first two years of relationship we're golden like you know and so after after that we just I feel like with every piece of adversity or triumph or with her career now it's just like everything feels so celebratory um which is why we try to focus on now presently instead Mm -hmm. of what has or been you know done to us or what has happened yeah Yeah. it's interesting i've uh if there's anything i've learned in our seven years of marriage it's like when there's areas of friction i used to just get bummed out and disappointed and like dang what Mm -hmm. the heck is this what do i do like she's annoying me why does she (laughs) why does she have to be like that right um but i've learned to try to look at that frustration and be like, okay, well, what is that saying about like me? Mm -hmm. What can I learn about that? That being said, relationship with your mom or like siblings, Mm -hmm. it's such a different game. Yeah. But for what it's worth, it might be, you know, I lost my dad six months ago. It's like parents, that relationship is precious. So obviously there's a lot of life that I am not, uh, privy to but coming up with a game plan to see if that could be rectified just you know. we've you know we've thought about what that would look like and i think what we we've never actually expressed is there's been things beyond just sexuality in that relationship. yeah we yeah. we yeah. keep that relationship zipped up yeah things that because you know it's tough because the Bible talks about honoring your mother and father and your days will be longer. And you mm-hmm. want to, you want to always make sure you're respectful because the the world doesn't need to know 
all the mm-hmm. ins and outs. Um, Good with that. So we, yeah, so we we button it up as just. Gotcha. I think it's easy to explain the trauma versus all of the, the, the religious trauma and the, you know, the conversation about her sexuality, but there's so much more to it. That yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's probably honestly like thirty percent of it. So yeah. there's, yeah, we, we can move on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we can we can, move, we can I, move on. But let me say this. Let me say this last thing. It's it's one of those things where, you know, I I I do my best to try and remain in, in a respectful manner yeah. because I'm never trying to tarnish somebody else's livelihood or career or the rest of their days here on this earth. But I'm also trying to protect my side of the family, which is now my wife yeah. and our future kids. So I have to always make sure that I'm respectful of both. Cause if I just like yeah. were to come out and just do like a whole damn tell all, you know, yeah. I feel yeah. like that actually speaks volumes of the person that I am yeah. mm-hmm. versus what the actual memoir or tell all would look like. Yeah. You, you would find some juicy details in there and be like, Oh my God, that makes sense now. But that also would make me look like a horrible person. Yeah. So we just zip it up and keep it as sexuality isn't. I dig it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So next question. Well, so, can ahead. I add one thing? That's something Andrew and I have talked about a lot because he definitely comes from a family that's more like family is everything. Mm-hmm. Right. No matter what, we're going to always like work to maintain this like large family. I come from a family of like blood doesn't matter. Mm. It's like your family is your family that like you would ride and die for mm-hmm. that like kind Whether of earn they're that. related or not. Whether right. they're related or not. <clears throat> but something Andrew and I really had to work on from his family and like dynamics was the whole like biblical leave and cleave of like just like you said, I have to protect my wife. Mm-hmm. I have to protect our family now. Right. And we have we have our first priority and duty to protect us. Right. Before we go to the outskirts. Yeah. And that can be really hard, and the dynamics are very difficult. Mm-hmm. And what is best for us sometimes <laughs> would not be best for an extended family. Right. So, yeah. and I, you know, it's funny because I'm more teeter on Andrew's side, <laughs> where <laughs> Mandy, <laughs> Mandy is like very much like you, Sean. Yeah. Where you know, it's like how you treat me repetitively is actually how you are. It doesn't matter if we're first cousins or yes. nieces and whatever. Me on the other hand. <laughs> I'm like, you talk about your third cousin twice removed as family. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you have to yeah. I know. I, 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 I think it's because oh God, I know their name. <laughs> I love we're family, family <laughs> though. Like that's, that's why that whole situation was I got you. heartbreaking. Yeah. Cause yeah. I come from a family where like, you know, we go to Christmas and Thanksgiving and like 80 of us show up, Yeah, you know? Yeah. So I don't even know any of my family members. I didn't say, there might be five of us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I do want to touch on the religious trauma since yeah. Danae experienced it, but you yeah. didn't. Yes. How did you circumvent that? Like, I think so when Danae and I first met and that first night happened where I saw her response to practice religion, <clears throat> you know, it wasn't even a response to Jesus. It wasn't a response to faith. It was literally a response to practice religion because I was watching an actual service with, you know, mm-hmm. a beautiful sermon. But um, watching that transpire, there was nothing a part of me that was affected by it personally, but I was like so devastated that anybody could create a relationship with God or instill the belief mm-hmm. that a relationship with God looks like that. And so I, I'm, in a, I'm a very big fixer. Like I was like, no, no, no. If you've never seen unconditional love, I'm going to prove it to you and I'm going to show you. And it was my immediate thing to show Danae a unwavering love about your faith and whatever that looked like Mm -hmm. for her. And I was I was not going to tell her, hey, you have to believe in God if we're going to be together or you have to pray with me or anything like that. I just I tried to do my best to instill a beautiful spirituality about her versus like practice religion. And Mm -hmm. I tried to separate the two conversations And then we worked really hard through therapy. She went to therapy for her religious trauma for a year straight and we'd come back. She would tell me what she learned and we would talk through it every single week. Um, And so it hurt me to see it more than it hurt me personally. Mm -hmm. Um, But then again, at the same time, when I lived in Alabama, I started feeling those things like maybe we are like, you know, second guessing myself for the first time in my life. 
So it was hard for her to watch both transpire. Like I was trying to fight back the unconditional love and show her that. But then I was also like trying not to second guess myself at the same time. Cause I, I was all alone in Alabama other than Danae. Like I didn't have any friends. I didn't have any family. And because we were in the closet, it was like, how do I meet friends? Like I can't tell them that we're together. You know, even our neighbors didn't know. I, mm-hmm. Obviously they knew cause we lived in a one bedroom apartment, but you slept on it, the couch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we never had the conversation of like, Oh, this is my girlfriend, you know? And so mm. I think at the end of the day, it came back from me just being so secure in my beliefs. And I think that came from my parents raised me not to push me into religion, but to push me to believe in something that was higher than myself. And my mom did such a phenomenal job. And we've talked about this. I literally like three weeks ago was like, thank you so much Mm. for never pushing religion on me, but always encouraging a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful and polarizing and so different. Cause then after we lived in Alabama for a year, then we moved to California for two years and lived 10 minutes from her mom. And her mother is one of the most spiritual people I've ever been around. She doesn't make a decision unless it's rooted right in her heart and with God. I mean, it is like, this woman, the the relationship she has with God is just like so admirable. Like I look at it and I'm like, I want that too. And so when we moved out there, I got firsthand experience of being next to her mom for two whole years. And I was just like, like my eyes were just so open all the time because I went from this organized religious trauma to what functioning in a certain piece looks like and you can you can't color outside of the lines you have to be here the whole time and a lot of public image is involved and all of that to then moving out to California and watching her mom just like draw me closer and closer and closer and it was like I had broken off so many pieces of shame and guilt and shame and unworthiness and Debbie which is her mom's name Debbie gets so much of that credit Mm. and luckily she's moving to nashville so i get to be around (laughs) it more she's an amazing human being though yeah i was watching a video on your youtube channel you moved from alabama to california to austin to nashville in like a pretty small amount of time we did yeah Yeah. our parents think we're absolutely crazy yeah (laughs) you just love moving well (laughs) no not really we were i think in order to start the relationship i was working as a real estate agent in alabama so i couldn't just that's bothering me. Okay. Um, <laughs> so we I talked about we need lint rollers for <laughs> these. There's a lot of lint. Because uh, I couldn't just up and move. Mandy ended up starting her own business on online on mm-hmm. Instagram. And so she was able to move. So once we got there for a year, we were like, we know this isn't our forever spot. So then we moved to California mm-hmm. for two years. We thought we'd be, there, be out there a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Um, then the pandemic happened and stuff was just bananas. Well, we were both self em- self employed where we could live anywhere, and then we started looking at real estate prices mm-hmm. at twenty four, twenty five. Like, Man, I really like, don't want a nine hundred thousand dollars studio apartment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't yeah. think that's the life I want to live. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it was pretty crazy because then we started looking at other states just to like kind uh-huh. of explore, and we're like, we weren't set on anything. And my parents kept saying, like, you would love Austin, Texas. And I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I don't know what the heck's in Austin, Texas. So we went there to visit, not thinking that we were going to move there, not thinking that we were even looking at houses. We found one house on Realtor, um, which is funny because it was a Sunday night. She found it on Realtor while we were still in California. We booked a flight two days later to go visit Austin just to look at the house and see the area and stuff. Um, But, again, just Mm -hmm. mostly visiting Austin. By day two, we signed a contract to build a house. I was like, well, I guess. That's awesome. Y'all yeah, move like, quick, man. It's like, yeah, dude, we're lesbians, Mandy, man. We're going to we'll pack up days. and get in a U-Haul in two yeah. days. <laughs> and then we'll be on our third house yeah. by year two. I mean, <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is crazy. I mean, like, but our time in Austin was wonderful. Like, we love the city. It it's just, very much like Nashville. Yeah, mm-hmm. it just didn't feel like us and, you know, my sweet wife over here needed to be back in the South. Yeah, like yeah. she, like this sweet southern girl. I was like, like, look, if I have the <laughs> thickest southern accent on our block, I'm in the wrong place. Yeah. Yeah. Like I need to be back in in the deep south. So then, Nashville's the better Austin. I yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree. Actually, it's not for those of y'all watching that are trying to move to Nashville. It's <laughs> yeah, no. Nashville's horrible. Uh, Don't come here. So bad. <laughs> um, no, but uh, Mandy's parents then let us know. 
that they were going to retire. They're going to retire here. So we were like, well, I'd like to be two hours from my dad. So then we moved. But yeah, it does look very sporadic. We look like we're crazy people. I get it. I feel like we need to start telling I wish people. we just went from like Alabama to Nashville versus the entire. Yeah, I mean, really we did the lap. same exact thing. Where'd y'all, hold on, <laughs> yeah, wait. Where y'all we live? were all, well, in a, bouncing around the NFL. Uh, we were oh, yeah. constantly moving. We did our stint in California for two or three years. Mm-hmm. Back in Nashville. We talked about going to Indianapolis. Yeah. We've been... We've been all over as well. Yeah, we I guess it. it makes a little more sense, though, because it was like a job. We were just like psycho people <laughs> doing like a victory <laughs> lap around the U.S. But there's yeah. something yeah. there. We have also had these conversations. There's something so cool about being with your spouse and having that life of like, I don't know how to say it. We, t- we talk about this, like this contentment of so many people are born and raised in middle of nowhere, Alabama, and... They live there for the rest of their lives. They work a nine to five. They have like dreams to a spot, like to go other Mm -hmm. places, but they just won't. Yeah. There's something so fun about doing that with your spouse. Yeah. Because it's like, that's all I need right now. Oh, you should have seen. It's so cool. The look on my face, like the faces of my neighbors and people I grew up with. (laughs) Because I had never lived outside of my hometown other than just briefly going to college an hour away. And I was like, I'm moving to California. They were like, what? (laughs) (laughs) We're like, why? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, how do I explain it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, my friend. Well, yeah. my really pretty friend yeah. that shares the bed with me. <laughs> we're moving together. Uh, no, but California yeah. was fun. We lived in Huntington Beach. Beautiful. Yeah. But Are you guys frequent Zillow surfers? That's hell yeah. Oh <laughs> I stay on Zillow. Weekly we, for me. We were just sending a house to each other this morning. I was like, babe. There's 180 acres listed. <laughs> like, what are you trying to do? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe in we... Nashville? Yeah. Is well, that well, like uh, an hour and a half away? I'll show it to you. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's like yeah. 20 minutes north of Nashville. Wait, you should show Janae. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude. Miss Natty Champ We're herself. Trying to get a, we need a community to go plans. in on the we thing together. Ideas. Okay. Mm-hmm. Is it a, makes it sound like a softball field or something. You know Mookie Pretty Betts? Much. Yeah. Oh, we it, don't need to. Hey, hey, keep it on the. Oh, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Don't okay. don't look this up, guys. Don't all right, all right. Up. We'll uh, we'll we'll chat. Okay. Um. Okay. You guys share your lives all over the internet like we do. Yes. Unfortunately, yes. you subject yourselves to millions of opinions on a daily basis. Love that for us. And considering your roots are so spread out, hmm. you have very southern, middle of nowhere <laughs> Alabama. You have California. Yes. You have very religious organized religion Mm -hmm. you have california yes (laughs) not organized religion but religious spiritual how do you navigate that on a daily basis subjecting yourselves to opinions of every kind god i uh, tell me if i'm over speaking but i don't feel like i like no joke we do not get a ton of like hate over our sexuality like no like seriously i Mandy told me this quote a couple of years ago and it was at confident. Nobody will question you. And ever since Mandy and I are just unapologetically and confident in our relationship Mm -hmm. and we put our best foot forward, we really don't get a ton of hate about our sexuality. Now, what we do get a ton of hate (laughs) about, which people are like, how the hell did this hillbilly land this girl? And I'm like, that's what y'all are upset about. Yeah, I think the only comments come from like, oh, Mandy actually isn't gay. She's secretly dating somebody or something like that. Oh, like, like the, the we weirdest to... comments. Oh, the Tim McGraw. We... Oh my God, I I did an interview with Tim McGraw, and Casual. everyone's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. yeah. <laughs> I'm like sweating thinking about it. Um, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but people are like, oh yeah, she's definitely straight. I'm she's like, definitely into Tim. Yeah, I'm sorry, like, Danae. And I'm like, like he could be my dad. Everybody's into Tim. I'm <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Who's not into right? Tim McGraw? Yeah. Yeah. That would be um, weird if my wife didn't think Tim McGraw was hot. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. thought yeah. Tim McGraw was hot. I, mean, I think Danae was sweating more than I was. Dude, his chest muscles? Oh my God. Yeah. Things harder than dinner plates. <laughs> <laughs> you have me dying with yeah. that. Dude. Oh he was God. so nice. Shout have out you to seen him. his whole rig that he travels with? Oh yeah, the workout the tour rig. Bus. Oh, yes. with the workout. Stuff? It is the oh, coolest yeah. thing I've ever yeah. seen. Yeah. Well, his chest muscles show yeah. that he's that is, very fit. The, and then on top of that, the only hate you get is p- some people think that her comedy is immature. That's the only conversations. But I've, it's comedy. I know. I'm like. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> 
<laughs> what like, am what I supposed do to do? Expect? Have mature comedy? I mean, yeah. a- anyways, but I feel like that would go off the rails. Um, yeah, there is really one it. thing about I think us that we purposely do tastefully, and I'm gonna. It sounds like I'm like boasting about ourselves, but even though we're a gay couple, we don't lead with our sexuality. Mm -hmm. And that's been something really important to us. And I think that people respect us more as a couple because we're not in your face gay people versus like, like we don't label ourselves. Like it's not necessarily like in your face gay. It's, we've talked about this. It's more of like, we don't have the rainbow flags in our bio and hashtag LGBTQ this and hashtag lesbian this. It's just like... <laughs> it's Mandy and Danae before it's Mandy and Danae, yeah. the gay yeah. couple. We just want to yeah. show people, like the biggest thing is is we want to show people that you can live a normal, successful, mm-hmm. happy life and also happen to be gay instead of let's make... Because I have nothing else interesting about me, let's make my entire identity about my sexuality. Yeah. And I just want the younger generation that are creators or that are professionals or going into business or going into their classrooms to know that you can be you can be confident in your sexuality, but don't allow it to take up so much space that it absorbs and overshadows who you are as a person because there's so much uniqueness to each of us as individuals Mm -hmm. and if we only allow one brand one umbrella of hashtag lgbtq to absorb who we are we're not allowing our friends like you guys to see that we have common interests like Mm -hmm. andrew and i could be buds we could like you know what i mean like we could hang out but if i'm just like constantly talking about like this or that then it overshadows it and that's one thing that we've actually found really remarkable on social media is that a lot of the couple things that we share is the same kind of couple Mm -hmm. things that you guys go through. I mean, we've already related on so many different topics already. And so when we're sharing our relationship, like I think it's refreshing, especially for people in the middle of nowhere, Alabama to see that my wife does husband thing all of the time, Mm -hmm. like all of the time. Like the noise are really bad. No, I'm I'm not just like, there's there's so many more commonalities (laughs) to our Uh relationship than there are differences Mm -hmm. to any normal relationship. And it's been really amazing to see the support around that. Yeah. For sure. What's the A on your necklace for? The A? Is that an A? M. Oh, M. Oh, that makes sense. That makes more sense now. (laughs) Uh, Have you you taken batting practice from Mandy? I don't want to. She (laughs) She throws heaters? Well, the thing about Mandy... Oh, what it's, are you it's been say? about eight years since she's pitched. <laughs> oh, so yeah. it, it, it can get a little sporadic, you know? Like, what if you've uh, your safety, seen me pitch? you don't want to. I, I've seen her pitch in the front yard, you know? Like, she'll throw one just like piping Y'all, down I the middle. I have not pitched for eight years. Remember at the lake, you know, piping down the middle and then maybe one up near the head? <laughs> you know, yeah. oh, like, oh remember the, the celebrity softball game when you dropped a pop fly? Oh, oh man. You. See, marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Normal. Yeah. Dang. yeah. Do you guys work out together? Um, we used to. We don't as much anymore just because okay. our gym space is kind of tight, but we Oh, we just to. can't. Yeah. We don't work out together. Yeah. We we started a workout yesterday. I said, Can you can you maybe pause? I'm just gonna <laughs> She was like, Do you think maybe you could not use the whole mirror? And I was like, I'm sorry that the mirror is this wide. Like, <laughs> do you want half a shoulder and I'll get half a shoulder? Like, how does that make sense? One of us needs to be the mirror person. Uh, yeah. So that worked. Out, that workout was like six minutes. And then <laughs> I walked downstairs and then we re- she continued and then I walked back up 45 yeah. minutes later. It was great. Yeah. Wait, the, the gym's too tight for two. Yeah. I started like- signing up for your workout program. Uh, you what? I started signing up for your workout program. You signed up for ours? Like the Google form thing. I, I, I didn't, I'm, not, I'm not lying. And then, and then I, saw, I saw a picture of uh, of Danae with the Bama It was like the before and after. The Where Bama is he? Picture. We need to get this was down. <laughs> we need to get this off the internet. Oh, no. That was an old I business think, of ours. I took ours. a screenshot because I thought. Oh, no. <laughs> that was such an old business of ours. Wait, I saw that. Oh, I got the, yeah. No, but did you see that? Did you see the after, after picture? And you saw. Yeah. <laughs> I was thicker Instagram. than a snicker. Like oh I was. Hey, man, you were dinking them home runs. I bet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my, my coach, his motto when he recruits people in Alabama, um, he says that to me, like you know, he shouldn't be saying this, <laughs> but he does. And it, he says, 
I like a girl with a big ass because big ass, big power. And I'm like, coach, you can't say that anymore. <laughs> I was like, you're going to get me too. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can't oh, say God. that. Oh, but no, I, I was a, I was thick at Alabama. Dang. I was like, uh, I was probably 35 pounds heavier than I am now. I'm five, I was five foot nine, about 180. Yeah, I was, I was crushing. But <laughs> burgers. <laughs> 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 no. Andrew, you got a to two fifty. Two fifty, thick boy, thick boy. Yeah, I'm like two twenty now, and I still feel big. But it's like, bro, my legs they were, were huge. He was thick. He two, was thick. I can't even imagine you at two fifty. I, I got pictures, and I had dreadlocks at one point in my life. What? Not with me. <laughs> Not with me. <laughs> Sean, you made, and then no, no, directly no. after no, no. that phase, I was like a frat boy. So it's like it, there's a lot. You're wearing on. you're wearing I've boat to... shoes with Abercrombie and Fitch it, it, polos. No, I never. And, I never. And, <laughs> no, no, this is directly after dreads. Oh, race. I was like, dude, what? He went from <laughs> he went from drug rugs and dreads oh. to Abercrombie polos, like, like, with like the moose on it. Yes. Mm. And no, I did not have. It was not. I did not okay. And pleated <laughs> khaki shorts. <laughs> <with both shoes. laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I, we all went through some. Was that college? Was that college? Yeah. That was the beginning of dating me, and I was like, we We're could good. work on this no, a I little did, bit. I like. I like to diversify interests because it's like an empathy building exercise. Yeah, but the, like, I did my senior year of high school. I did a, a theater play because I was like, I don't understand why people do this, and I did it. Freaking yeah. slayed it. M- met some new friends. So he also and joined then, a frat. And then I, uh, is that empathy too? Yeah, yes. That was my junior really? year. Really? I literally, because I, I, I wanted to know what the, uh, what do you call it, the pledge process was like. Yeah. yeah. So but then I you DM didn't this, do the I pledge I DM'd the, the pledge leader beforehand. I was like, this better be the hardest thing I've ever gone through. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it was actually weird. The whole it was actually <laughs> weird. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, they make it seem like you're going to be in like this dark basement doing like seances and stuff. We kind of did that. To oh, be honest. oh, my <laughs> oh, God. I'm glad it was true. You didn't do that? No, I never joined. I don't... First of all, I don't think I could have joined a fraternity, and I definitely <laughs> wouldn't have been to a sorority. <laughs> I was Especially that, in Alabama, sorority is uh, different yeah. level. I have a character that I play on TikTok called Emma K. Grace, and I get <laughs> super dolled up. And uh, I'm like, hey, y'all, I'm Emma K. Grace, rushing for the University of Alabama. My daddy just bought me this St. Laurent bag. My daddy doesn't always buy me stuff, but when he does, he buys me the good stuff. And I'm oh, like, my God. Today, you act like you didn't used to wear Miss Me jeans and hoop earrings. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had hoop all the earrings. You Do you remember the big hoop phase, though? Yes. What about the bangles? Bigger the better. Yeah. What's oh, bangle? bangles? The yeah. bangle Pretty bracelets. Much hoop earrings for your wrist. Oh, like hoop the, earrings for your wrist. wrist. You had to like, yes. do this to get your. But you do a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you can make noise. Yeah. <laughs> who uh, who is more creative between the two of you? She's more creative when it comes to strategy and marketing and having a game plan. Like she's helping me write my comedy show right now. Um, I think performance wise, like that wasn't the question <laughs> here, but creativity here. <laughs> she like, is. I'm the show. Yeah. <laughs> yes. She's Mandy does a ton yeah. a ton of writing, especially with jokes, but like Danae is so good at improv of anything. Like if I mean she can have a conversation about anything and everything and then with her comedy and stuff it's just like so quick wit. I think with me it's a lot more like strategy. I I, I love creation process. I mean, I studied strategic communications in university and I love marketing. That's what I was doing prior to um influencing so- social media i was like i don't even know what to call it yep. social media life um but i just i love creating like i love video i love photo i love spatial creation i just am a very creative person yeah but she's also like really really like to me her bread and butter is marketing like strategy mm-hmm. I guess. yeah she's a she's a fantastic she's got a brain for understanding trends and where the world's moving i was gonna say obviously we're still getting targeted for your before and after ad <laughs> I You're don't doing know where that's right. I'm so <laughs> I have no we'll link that down below. I, I, I did get a message today saying I think you've been hacked. So maybe that's a, a part of that. I have no what? idea. Babe. It's funny you said this though, because I distinctly remember seeing you a couple of days ago on Instagram. It's before and after. Yeah. And then somebody's using it. It's not us. Oh. Oh, oh somebody Uh-oh. is using an ad. Like it was a post. I I'm not gonna lie, I, I didn't <laughs> take it in a lot, but I was like, Danae. Yeah. 
That's definitely somebody's, yeah, that's somebody's a scam. using it. Yeah, kind of like they did old Lainey Wilson. Did y'all see that one? No, no. What happened? So you know how Lainey lost some weight over the past year. Oh. People are saying that she takes their weight loss gummies, and so Lainey <laughs> got on uh, Instagram. She's like, "Hey y'all, I want to let y'all know." I lost weight because I'm hustling my butt off. I don't take weight loss gummies. Wow. And I was that like, would be nice, though. She's like, that would be nice, though. So I need to get on there yeah, and tell people. Yeah, I don't people. know where that is. That's why I was like, where did you guys oh, see no, that? Oh, no, no. I found the link, though. And I know exactly where it is. Okay. Is it? But I got a targeted ad. Well, well it's on a YouTube video, <laughs> yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's oh. on an old YouTube video in the uh, description. But that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. All Who, right, good Who's your creative inspiration? Do you have any, like, creators that you? Creators? Or comedians? Or... Yeah, I, uh. I like Cat Williams. Oh, wow. I, for whatever reason, wow. this little white girl from Alabama, like all of her favorite comedians are all black guys. And <laughs> it's so funny because it's like I grew up in a predominantly uh, white town, but my dad's favorite comedians were Dave Chappelle and mm -hmm. Cat Williams, um, Tracy Lawrence, not Tracy Lawrence, Martin Lawrence. Um, like, 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 what? Tracy Lawrence, find out who you bring no, no. Martin Lawrence. Um, shout out to Tracy though, great song. Yeah, you're yeah. missing your icon. I was gonna say you're also a country music singer yeah. these yeah, days. Yeah, it's getting weird, y'all. Writing a full length album. Who am I missing? Lucille Ball. Oh she yeah, wasn't black though. Oh, wow. I was going through my favorite black. <laughs> <Yeah. creators. laughs> I know, but I'm surprised you didn't say that. Well, that, yes, that's her biggest inspiration for a comedy. Really? Yeah. And yeah. Lucille That's Ball. Nice. Man, Lucille. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. She changed I used to the love game. that show. Right? Dude. Yeah. She truly did change the game when it comes to women in comedy, especially in that era. In Not Liza Koshy? Are you a Liza Koshy fan? She doesn't know who that is. I, I just I just showed you her. She was like... She got oh, the really TikTok girl. You mm -hmm. should look at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, no, she she has yeah. She has some TikTok good She's humor. not a TikTok girl. Sorry. She's <laughs> a TikTok girl. <laughs> she's a TikTok girl. She, she's she's a she started on TikTok? No, she Dude. started on Vine. On oh, Vine. yeah. She started on Vine, but YouTube, and then she's been in a lot of... She's been yeah. in, like, every movie I've seen lately. You gotta, she's, like, now transitioning into, like, Hollywood. Right. Yeah. She got... She was the biggest creator yeah. on social media. I would say she's transitioned... She's there. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's, like, yeah, arrived. Yeah. Yes. I mean, because she was in this movie, and then she started promoting this movie, and then she was in... Yeah, yeah she's and she's, like, no longer on socials no. as much. But go back no. and watch her YouTube video. Oh you God. can take notes, because she does different characters. But, like, uh, Jet... What's his last name? Jet Kaczynski or something like that? Oh, my okay. gosh. She, she has different... And Helga. I okay. used to love... Oh, like, my gosh. I, I'm a YouTube yeah, I would say go watch her on, like, TikTok, though, because her YouTube's no, are... No, take it back. YouTube. <laughs> I, <laughs> but she does her short skits on... TikTok, yeah. which like give you the summary of her comedy. Okay, yeah. I'll I'll find her YouTube. I long literally format. just showed her. <laughs> and then I'll watch her on TikTok and I'll yeah. tell you. Watch them all. I, I showed you her what like a month ago. I was like, yeah. how do you not know who this is? Because we were watching a movie with she her did. in it. Yeah, and she was like, oh, I have no idea. I'm not a huge consumer though. Like, yeah, I have my people that I like, and I'm not out trying to like find more. I, yeah. I got my people. Like, I'll watch Cat Williams from the early 2000s, Dave Chappelle before like 2004 and then Lucille Ball. Like I've, you know, I've got my people that I like and then I just don't consume a lot of content. Like that's probably better. Yeah. I don't know. She assumed, but I, what's her name? Eliza. Liza. Liza. I'll send you Liza. Link. I'll send you link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're going to shout out send, to Liza. I'll send you some TikToks. Yeah. Please do. I can't <laughs> wait to watch her. Um, oh it doesn't have to be the closing question, but I'm just curious. I want to no, jump to I'm it. I'm having fun. I know. Let's just hang out. Andrew would just, keep every get. We I, need to start giving you a time limit. <laughs> I actually had this thought. We're good. Like Caroline's gonna be in the back going like. <laughs> um. I feel like one of my favorite things that we've taken away from this conversation is like how to navigate relationships with trauma. I feel like we get a lot of questions about that. Mm -hmm. If you guys were to give one piece of advice to couples, yeah, given everything that your journey has mm -hmm. kind of gone through. What would that be? Wait, can I give you advice real quick? Cause you got, <laughs> I just need a, a little piece. I thought right he was there. really going to say, it? well, let me it's start like, with you, like Sean. A, I, think you, I think you smudged the, you, you colored outside. You know how Danae was talking about coloring outside the lines? You did a little bit of that with your eyes. All right. You You're go. being creative, Ooh, and yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> there you go. I appreciate your creative oh, outlook nice. today. Yes. <laughs> if I could give anybody any piece of advice, I think it would be to lead with empathy. I don't think you can be angry. I don't think you could be judgmental. I don't think you can be overreactive if you're in an empathetic place. So I think we forget that like you are in a merriment or in a relationship with somebody that grew up so different than you. Mm -hmm. No matter 
what it may look like on the outside. There was different conversations in the household. There were different experiences. There's different personality traits. And I mean, like us as individuals, that's just an entire entity of things we can go down, but then try to create a relationship around two different worlds. I mean, I think we forget that. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of, I mean, like the conversation you guys had about your relationship with family, you would think growing up that everyone was like that, or you might Mm -hmm. think that everyone was like the way that you were. And I think if you can be empathetic and open to other people's experiences, as well as finding empathy to have patience and just lead with kindness and love, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, if you're not showing your partner unconditional love, then you're just hurting them, you know, like and that was something I had to navigate really intensely and intently with Zanae because I even though I was so angry sometimes that she was choosing her mom's conversation mm-hmm. or the trauma that she had over me to where it hurt me deeply. I had to remember she's not doing this to me. She's doing this in a reaction of, Mm -hmm. right? And so the empathy had to lead or I had to lead with that empathy to show her unconditional love. No matter how you react to your trauma, I'm still going to love you through it. Mm -hmm. And I think at at the end of the day, there's no person that would be mad that you're showing them empathy. You know, Mm -hmm. there's only goodness that can come out of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, how thing. you gonna follow that one? I don't know, <laughs> man. That was give me some baby. That was good. <laughs> um, the thing I've had to learn in our relationship when navigating it is when my wife comes to me and is telling me a feeling that she has or a problem or anxiety or a struggle, I want to find a solution. And uh, there's some moments where she's not looking for a solution. She's not looking for me to like lecture her, or give her like the clear answer to something. She just needs me to to be there and to listen to her. And so for me, it's just to really hone in and and work on those listening skills because I think I get that from my dad. My dad always gave me lessons and always gave me a solution versus sometimes I just needed my dad to just listen. So for me, I've had to like really work on that and make sure that she feels heard. Um, Cause especially as women, which it's funny, I don't know when God made me, I think he got real confused. He was like, <laughs> we're gonna put you in a woman body but give you a man's brain. It's just, <laughs> so for me, like, I, I just have really had to, to hone that skill and not always try to be the, the masculine energy that wants to provide the solution and fix it in that moment yeah. as just, let's just listen for a moment make sure she feels really understood and really heard. Mm. So I love that. I bet you do. Oh, yeah. I bet you do. Cause it's, it happens at least once a day where I'm like, I got to work on that. Denise she doesn't need a solution right now. <laughs> she just wants you to just freaking yeah. sit on a stool I mean, and listen to her talk while she's in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Love that. I know. To your point about empathy, someone yeah. the other day said, like, don't you think God just up there, like, bored with <laughs> humans at this point after, like, thousands of years? I was like, right. no. <laughs> the amount of ridiculousness, <laughs> like, you, everybody is so different and yeah, wild yeah. and quirky. It's like, yeah. bro, that would be. I think we keep surprising him, probably. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Like, Dang. I have that feeling, it's too. Like, what are you doing now? But that's what makes Why? it fun. It's yeah, like, definitely. wow, you know, Murphy's Law, like any, yeah. anything that can happen will. It's like, all right, well, Absolutely. what are the possibilities today, baby? Know, it's, it's really crazy how you can have the same experience as 300 people and there will be 300 different reactions. Yeah. 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 I'm like, how are we all not crying, laughing, screaming or whatever? Like everyone's like the way that we react to good news and bad news. And like Danae was saying, like when she when I do need her to just listen and she's being reactive, it's just like why did you think that was going to work? Yeah. You know? And so it's like, it's, it's comical. And I think that's where like you, the empathy comes in. It's just, everyone's so funny. Mm-hmm. Like, and then you add media into that and social media and outside opinions. And then our world of having to manage that also while talking to a microphone right now, mm-hmm. hoping that this is being perceived well. You know? Right. 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 <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. It's like, just man, so... I really hope this comes across well. Yeah. Yeah. Has social media been a good thing? Net, net positive for you guys? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's given us more freedom to just live the life that we want to live. Mandy worked a nine to five before we met, and then I was tied to 
you know, other people's schedule with real estate. With uh, content creation, it's like we not only get to create the things that we're most passionate about. Like with Mandy, it's a lot of beauty, a lot of lifestyle, a lot of fashion. With me, it's comedy. That's all I've ever wanted to do. So not only are we filling those passions, but it also allows us, just like you guys, to be able to mm -hmm. spend the time during the day devoted to creating and then spending the time we want with our family. Yeah, and I think growing up, I think if myself or Danae saw a relationship like ours, our early 20s would have been a lot easier, um, just personally. <laughs> and then also, I think it's such a beautiful thing. You can connect with people that you would have never met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had a message the other day that this person was going through chemo that would just go to our pages every single day and mm. just find joy in laughing with us. And she was like, this is what I do in chemo. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. that is what our little 15 <clears throat> second minute clips <throat> can do for people. Like, and that's where all of the weird hate comments or the spam or whatever like it just doesn't matter because if you're changing somebody's day like making them smile because of a video that you created because you were having fun at home like how mm -hmm. freaking cool yeah you know? know people people give social media bad rap i know but i'm like it's pretty amazing it really it is. is i don't feel like people give social media bad rap that are our generation or younger if you've like grown up with it you understand yeah. it and you can utilize it I think it's really hard for anybody older than us yeah. to wrap their head around. Yeah. My dad's, my my dad, my dad's <laughs> my still, <laughs> my daddy, he still asks, how do y'all make a living? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's very hard for him to understand yeah. just because, again, like you said, he just got an iPhone yeah. not long ago. So it's yeah. like. Yeah. I just feel like they're on the wrong side of the algorithm if it's not a positive space. Yeah. Or well, they're I'm just like, on you're Facebook. creating that space. You know that, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <on Facebook. laughs> so my agent was like, you need to be on Facebook because when we start booking out your comedy tour, like Facebook is a big reason where we can find your demographic to know what yeah. cities to go to. So I was like, oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, let me get on Facebook. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. The comments, uh, they're always... I love 65 and plus community, okay? <laughs> but on Facebook, it, let me just go and pinpoint this demographic. <clears throat> 65 to 75, they don't realize, or they, maybe they do, that they're leaving a really nasty public comment. I think they think sometimes they're sending it to somebody else and they're like, look at this ugly lady that looks like she could be a man in her wig. And I'm like, I'm <laughs> Why would they're you brutal. type that out? Yeah, they're, brutal. Yeah. they're brutal. And then they usually always have some sort of political affiliation as their cover profile or always. their profile picture. <laughs> always. Um, and Do I'm just. share all, like syndicate all your stuff to Facebook as well? Yeah, pretty much. <gasps> yeah. I will say this. That's though, his you, you grow like yeah. wildfire on there. Yeah. Like you, but you gotta be, you, they will cut you to your knees. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just always think it's funny. Like my parents are on Facebook and like yeah. nothing else. No. Yeah, and some of the links I get sent from like my mom, I'm just like, mom, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this is the Russians. Like, <laughs> yeah. you can't be believing yeah. these. Uh, <laughs> she's like, did you see what happened? I'm like, yeah. that didn't happen. Yeah. I know, cause like that age group, they're like propaganda, propaganda, and I'm like, y'all are <laughs> yeah. propaganda on Facebook. Yeah. You are cultivating propaganda. Uh, like, yeah. it is the most. It's just the most depressive app I've ever been on. And I've never been on the right side of Facebook. So yeah. I'm not sure there is one. Um, I will continue to bless Facebook with my content <laughs> yeah. and not read the comments. Yeah. 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 I can't do it. That's just today's content on there. I'm like, I don't even want to play read the in comments. the sandbox. Comments are so mm, they're so, bad. They're bad. I have yeah. two more questions. One is, what are your goals career-wise now? Well, uh, we have a lot in the works right now that we haven't really been able to share. So thank you for asking that. But uh, right now I am writing with Mandy and some other songwriters in Nashville um, a full-length comedy country album. So the album will be integrated. A lot of the songs will be integrated into my one-woman show. So I'm coming out with a comedy show uh, hopefully by Q1 of next year. And the comedy show is going to be, it's not stand-up. It's uh, it's a one woman show where I it is me the entirety of the show and I'm going to have characters that I've created on TikTok integrated into the show. I'm going to be doing a lot of storytelling and then those storytelling or those stories rather will lead into the songs that I've written about those stories. So um, Can it's going to tickets yet. Not yet, <laughs> but soon, but soon. <laughs> um, and Mandy has been helping me write the comedy show. She surprisingly 
being from California, she has such a knack for Southern culture and humor. I think because she has such a fresh perspective. It's just so much funnier. Yeah. I think yeah. it's so much funnier. But uh, yeah, those are like the two big goals right now. And um, I, I can't, I'll tell you all fair, but it'll happen within a couple of weeks. They what are done. your goals, Mandy? Well, I... I, like I was saying earlier, is I, I love the creator process. And so obviously Instagram and building our social media platforms out, but writing the show has been so fun because it's not just people think that you're just like sitting down writing jokes, mm -hmm. but it's an entire show process of like, when you're going to enter the stage, what exit, mm -hmm. how are you going to integrate the audience? What type of way are you going to integrate each, you know, new character and stuff? So I'm helping write the show, helping write music. Um, I also she's a big right on Road Hard, which is so funny because she's so classy. Like me, he's like so classy for her to write Road Hard and put up wet. I'm like this is weird. I know. Um, but I also like in this season, I'm a big support to Danae's career. But down the road, we are about to launch a podcast as well. Let's go! Um, Yay. So we would love to do like a podcast tour and have you guys on it, of course. Yeah, of course. Um, but also like, I would love like a tv sit down morning show or a, just a conversation like and i think it'd be really fun for Danae and i have a new space in that whether that looks like a late night show a morning show a talk show um but what i was also saying is Danae Danae recently signed to she has an agent now for tv and film as well and they're booking out her comedy tour but also with so many more opportunities i mean like i am just so open to creative spaces as well as entertainment and so, like, my goals are obviously to build out her comedy career and our podcast and that tour, but also to just be more in the entertainment space. Like, I would love to do interviews for Vogue one day. Like, that would be so Same. much fun. Um, I also love Architectural Digest, so I would love to, if I could tour some of those houses. Yeah. I would she would die. make, like, me and I've talked about it, hosting in some capacity or interviewing, whether that's at, like, New York Fashion Week or at the Oscars on the red carpet. Mandy just, like, loves high fashion, so she would know, like, you put me on the red carpet. I don't even know what those brands are, but right. Mandy loves high fashion. Like, Fashion Week would be, like, her jam. Yeah. So to be able to, like, host in some capacity, like... I think she'd I knock it that. out of the park. Yeah. So it was cool to see you do Tim McGraw. Well, not do Tim McGraw, but it was cool to see your interview <laughs> Tim McGraw a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just because that's the trajectory of where you want to go is to be able to get in those spaces. Yeah. And then with TV and film, if like ever say Danae had a TV show and they wanted me as a cameo, I wouldn't say no. We actually, nice. yeah. <laughs> not to derail this convo, but Mandy and I got to be extras in um, a movie with... Um, Eugene Levy from Schitt's Creek, um, Diane Keaton, and Kathy Bates Sick. back in March. That's awesome. Yeah. Y'all, it was That's so right. cool to do that together because, like, we're sitting in this room where they're filming this scene with all these massive A-list actors. And, like, Mandy and I are, like, almost forgetting that we're on camera because we're, like, so enamored with the actors. <laughs> we're, like, watching them. And it was really cool to see them all do their thing. Like, Kathy yeah. Bates is, like, a method actor. She never breaks character even oh, when wow. she's on lunch yeah. break. So, like, you can't go up and be like, hey, Kathy, because she's still in her character. Yeah. Eugene Levy's the most serious comedic person I've ever been around. Like, he would go, he would be pacing the room and counting his steps and wow. and, and being very <clears throat> strategic and methodical. That's and then so he'd get to back watch. to a comedy space where he's being super goofy. And then, like, Diane Keaton is Diane Keaton in every movie she plays, yeah. like, on or off camera. Um, but I think we really got bit by the bug of, I've always wanted to be in television and film, but I think Mandy really got bit by the bug when she was on set for those two days because it was like, this is this is such an art, and mm -hmm. it's so mm -hmm. cool to see people do it, mm. especially from behind the scenes when you've never seen that side of it. Yeah. All right, last thing, I want to hear your engagement story. Oh, my gosh, y'all. It was the best. <laughs> we have a YouTube video on it. Oh uh, hopefully, we don't have workout links in is that it? YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... Uh, oh. Mandy, go, go Mandy, it was her birthday, and uh, I had booked a resort that I could barely afford at the time. This was back in... Uh, you could leave those details out. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, it was like a bougie resort in Southern California. I was like, babe, we do not belong here, but we about to be engaged here. <laughs> and I booked it, and um, 
I told her on her birthday on January 7th, I said, we're going to go to this really nice uh, steakhouse that's in the resort. She was like, babe, you're so sweet for doing this for me. Like, nobody's ever done something like this for my birthday. And I was Can like, I talk like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, get ready. Um, I was like, but hey, if we could, though, like, let's let's uh, get outside like an hour before our reservation. Because I want to fly the drone up and I want to take some pictures with the ocean in the background. And Because it's January at a beach resort, mm-hmm. there was like nobody there. So mm-hmm. it was like, we are all by ourselves. So we got out there an hour ahead of time, and uh, I had put the ring in the drone pocket, and I was like, okay, go go stand over there while I get this drone ready. And she's like, no, 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 I'll just stand right here. And I'm like, go stand over <laughs> <Yeah>. there. <laughs> you put like, the ring on the drone? No, 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 in the <laughs> drone, uh, like, like case because yeah. I didn't want to lose it because I was I in like a, I don't ever fly it and so she knew I wasn't going to open it. Okay, so I was like, no, 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 go over there, Mandy. So uh, Mandy walks and takes her cute little place. And then I grab the ring and put it in my hand and then I fly the drone up and I get it just right to where I want it. And it's just beautiful landscape and Mandy and I are just right in the middle. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm going to snap a couple of photos with the drone. And um, I was like, let's do one where we spin. And so I spun her and as her back was to me, I got down on one knee and she spun around. I had the ring and I was holding it up and it was like in the video you see her, she goes like she just rocks back. Like, oh, my God, how did you pull this she, off? But I thought she fell at first. I was like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God. And uh, I had her mom and dad's at the very tip-top balcony. She had yeah. no idea that they were there. And so they started clapping. And then this lady that was on her balcony, she goes, I knew you were going to propose. Uh. <laughs> she started clapping. Yeah, and, really um, beautiful. and then we went and we had dinner at, uh, I think it's a bourbon steak. Is I, it? I think it is bourbon. The same Fancy. bourbon uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. here, I believe they had one Have of that restaurant. Have you guys ever been to Dana Point? Yes. So it was the Monarch yeah. in Dana Point. Oh, sick. Yeah. Yeah. It, they changed the name since. Somebody bought oh. them out. But okay, uh, well, yeah, it was. not the Monarch anymore. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was amazing. And then we uh, called my dad right after and got to celebrate with him. Oh, and, yeah. Um, yeah, the video is on, on YouTube and it's. It's really cheesy because it looks like we're just going to have a, a vlog. And then at the end, you're like, wait a minute. This is a very extravagant <laughs> yeah. engagement. Yeah. yeah. Did you get married in Telluride? And- no, we went on a, a honeymoon in Telluride. And I got, Alt- I got so sick. <laughs> I was like, fuck. Oh. <laughs> I ate a buffalo sandwich at the airport, which was That's no bueno. You should never do that <laughs> at the Montrose airport. <laughs> it, I think it has all of one gate. And a man that's like, buffalo sandwiches, buffalo sandwiches. And I was like, God, I'm so hungry. I'll take one. And then by the time we got to our resort, I was altitude sick. And I was sick eating buffalo chicken. So Mandy and I had a very romantic honeymoon. She was she had altitude sickness for like a day and a half. And then we did. We were able to like go and it was rough. I'm not going to lie. We went Buffalo to tell you right once. Buffalo I could not function. <laughs> really? I was so sick the whole, like, yeah. my brain felt like it was coming out of my head. I'll never yeah. go again. No. It was, <laughs> no. It was, it was beautiful. so beautiful. It's I 11, had a great time. It was nice. 11,000 feet above sea level. I literally thought my brain was exiting my body. <laughs> no amount of Tylenol. Yeah. Nothing. nothing. I felt and the man, like death. He was like, just put this oxygen tank on your face and just like. Breathe so, in every ten minutes. I'm like, what kind of honeymoon is this? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, just like really suck it's, it down, and I was like, what are we on Everest? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Uh, I didn't feel it. And then we went out. We booked this uh, horse, horse thing, <laughs> horseback riding. <laughs> yes, we booked, yeah, that's what it is. Horseback <laughs> riding. And the man, his name was Rowdy, and he was, uh, I think he was 85. The <laughs> horse. No, <laughs> the man that owns the ranch, and he comes out and he's like, "This is how he starts the ride." He goes, "Good morning," and we were like, "There was a group of like eight of us," and we were like, "Good morning." How do y'all know each other? And I go, "We just got married. We're on our honeymoon." And he goes, "Hope y'all don't like Biden." And I was, oh, I- I was like. This is the we- like. Tell your ride is the yeah. weirdest. Yeah. I will never listen. If you live in Tell your ride, shout out to you. But we had <laughs> the weirdest experience. Yeah, you had a great time. You had a great yeah, time. I bet you did. I was you not the- sick, and I my horse was great. And it's, it's just, beautiful out it there. Beautiful. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. It is beautiful. Yeah. I got to show you pictures that we took like a group picture with our friends we went with, and 
I, th- I think it was the altitude. Like we all got swolled up. Like our face was <laughs> swollen. <laughs> I, do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> I was My brain dying. was leaving. Dude, I'm with <laughs> you on that. Oh, My head hurt so bad. Can I get a golf cart? I had three really bad um, head injuries. And so oh. I was reading to where when you've had TBIs or concussions, yeah. The altitude affects you more. So, did you ever fall on your head in gymnastics? Like, did you ever get a concussion? I, nothing diagnosed, but I'm sure. I'm sure, maybe a little bit. But I yeah, on my head quite a few times. It so. was like a like a pressurizer. Like it just yes, yeah. It was like <sighs> like it like your brain is leaving. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Mandy was just like having my tea. Yeah. She's yeah. Like, a piece There's time. a Thai restaurant a couple of blocks huh? down. I'm gonna go walk down and get <laughs> yeah. some. And I'm like, what is my voice? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I can't breathe. This is Buffalo chicken. <laughs> our whole group did like a yeah. three hour hike to the top of one of the mountains. Oh, and they I even went further? Yes. They're psychos, dude. With me. Y'all need to watch out for them, friends. I'm telling you. <laughs> there are few things more important for your health than your nutrition, which is why it's always been an important part of our life. But it's even more important to pay attention to your nutrition when you're pregnant and recovering or breastfeeding. And fun fact, did you know your genetics play a huge role in your ability to metabolize nutrition? I learned this when Sean took the Genate prenatal test. It was fascinating. They use a new approach to nutrition by looking at your genetics and providing personalized nutrient recommendations. For pregnant women, your nutrition affects your baby's cognitive development and has been linked to long-term health benefits, so it's really important. There isn't a one-size-fits-all method to nutrition, which is why taking the Gene 8 test was such an eye-opener for Sean. Gene 8 goes further than any other prenatal supplement brand by helping women personalize their nutrition based on their genetics. It was also really easy to do. I took the Gene 8 test and they sent me supplements that are formulated from genetic research and made in a way my body can personally fully absorb. They also have a registered dietitian you can meet with to help explain your results. This company has so much research to back up their approach to prenatal nutrition, which is something that Sean and I both really appreciate. By purchasing a Genate test and nutrition bundle, you'll have confidence that your nutrition needs will be taken care of. Head to genate.com to learn more. Good laughs, guys. Yeah, yeah. That was thank a, you guys. That was a great show, guys. That was fun. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for taking the time oh to join us. Thank you for having us. It's the best.